So, Dad was off with Mum to enjoy a Christmas holiday getaway in their brand new motorhome to go to France, uh, which was a big new experience for them. And in the week running up to that, he'd been a little bit off and he was getting dizzy and sickness. He went to get help, but sort of wasn't really sure if it was like labyrinthitis or something like that. Cut to him just arriving across the border, very, very sick. Um, and that kind of escalated. And mum got him to a hospital, put him on a drip, not getting better. They sent him to another hospital in France. And that is where, two, three days later, a brainstem blood clot stroke happened, hit. From hitting the tarmac, we have had intensive care and we've been in hospitals, uh, respiratory wards that need to have such a specialist care to deal with tracheostomy. And that actually isn't readily available in, in, in all hospitals. That's, you know, a really big thing to say. So Dad actually was getting, he was, be, he was well enough to get off intensive care, but he couldn't go anywhere else because he had a trachea, a tracheostomy. So that meant a lot of waiting and a lot of fighting, a lot of searching for us to find somewhere that could do that level of complex care for him to breathe <laughs> and, and help him. And then also to give him some rehabilitation that was so intensive and so prescribed and so specialist to his condition. And that has been a fight that has taken us a long time. We're talking months. Um, and we found it. <laughs> we found it. We were welcomed into the story of the building and of the family, you know, of how this has become what it is. That felt a little bit special and knowing that staff were staying over the night before so they could be here whatever time he arrived. Knowing that a cup of tea was ready whenever we wanted was, do you know what, not what we have had before. In France, that wasn't a thing. <laughs> and then as he's now settled in and he's improving in terms of healthcare complexity is, it's the peace of mind that you can't pay for, you can't, you know, tick a box for. My mum is being cared for. She's my dad's wife, but she's also part of his care. Um, so she needs to be here and she's been made to feel that she's allowed to be here anytime she wants. She can call anytime she needs. And when she's here and dad's resting, having work, physio, massage, she's feeling relaxed. She's in an environment that's comfortable and warm. Mm. He came, unfortunately, with a, a chest infection, pneumonia. Um, so we then saw the staff again rushing to make sure that he was kept here, kept going, got through it. Happened in no time at all. He recovered from that really quickly. That's a sign to us that they knew how to care for that side of him. All the progress, his mood. Um, we know he's had, obviously, a lot of... He's had a lot to deal with, to come to terms with. Other physical things, other physical signs that we've seen is, is, is resistance in limbs and muscles that we weren't seeing before. Head turning, you know, facial movement, um, smiles, laughs, my gosh. Uh, some of them more on demand, some of them are not quite consistent yet. And that's what we kept getting told. Oh, that's not, we're not there yet, but it will happen. I've been told in this building something I've never been told since the stroke hit. You know, he will get better, he will improve. We don't know what end, no one can say that, but he will improve and he is. The NHS panelled together and decided that if he, and the phrase was, the quote is verbatim, if this man is going to improve anywhere, he's going to succeed here in steps. And the NHS have funded that and I will always be incredibly grateful. They were there at the start, they, kept, they received him from the tarmac and they've then actually given the link to be in a place like this. They're funding him for 12 to 18 months, and then we'll see.